Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. My name is Mildra, and I am your Gaming Monk for the evening. This is a response to the RPG Pundit's recent video on making magic items feel special. Now, I don't have anything against Pundit personally, but he and I have wildly different philosophies on game design. In this instance, Pundit argues that making magic items more rare would make them more special. Now, on Twitter, I had responded with a quote and retweet saying, I agree with the intent, I just don't agree with the method. It's certainly possible that I can't see the proper picture in this because I'm not an OSR guy. In my opinion, I'm glad that I'm not. I've only covered OSR games that present something interesting, as nostalgia only goes so far. I have no desire to delve into Castles and Crusades or Osric or Labyrinth Lord for this very reason. I'm sure they do things different, but it's not different enough to garner my interest. I'm more interested in games that take the old school concept and then build a new identity from that. I know that's not fitting the old school mindset, but that's what I prefer. But I'm going to stop dancing around the matter for now. I believe that rarity is not the problem, and in fact making magic items more rare opens up more problems than it solves. A lot of character archetypes in D&D are made with the assumption that they'll be supplemented with magic items. One that comes to mind is the fighter in Paladin, where they outright state that you'll likely be getting magic items as you level up. They don't outright state what items you're going to get, they just say that you might get some. At least in the versions of the, of the AD&D second books that I still have, or feel like digging through. If you make magic items more rare, you need to address this to fill in the void. Now, I'm sure you could go, oh, that makes them too powerful, then they become like comic book characters. Well, too bad. You can't have it both ways. The fact is, D&D assumes a degree of magic item use in order to keep up with the monsters and encounters a party might deal with in a given campaign. If you want to blame anybody for this, blame certain mythologies. Of course, part of this is a consequence of the fact that D&D can't quite decide what style of fantasy it is. And no, being a high fantasy doesn't mean anything in this regard when the mechanics don't reflect it. The degree of this specialness comes down to romanticism, and I do not trade in that. Now, for the last part of this, I want to address Pundit specifically, because I saw the back and forth that he had with friend of the show, James Streisand, aka Ash of Creativity. Now, Pundit, you used an example of a plus zero sword with a backstory being more interesting than a plus four sword with a few random powers associated with it. This, in my opinion, is a terrible, terrible argument, because you presume the latter can't have a story associated with those abilities. And calling it a no-name sword only further highlights this. You dismiss the counter out of hand without consideration, which, to my view, betrays a blinding arrogance. Now, personally, I believe in having mechanics create story, the two being in a yin-yang relationship. What you argue is that one should supplant the other. And if you do that, you end up making both ends of the stick worse. So if rarity isn't the problem, what do I think is? Simply, narrative importance. The example I often use as my ideal is the noble phantasms in the Fate meta series. I realize that since Grand Order became such a big deal, that's kind of gotten out of hand, but it still applies. A heroic spirit's noble phantasm is the representation of their story, their myth made manifest. In that regard, a magic item should have its own story associated with it that's reflected within the abilities said magic items have. Just being a masterwork or just a better version of a sword is not enough. Bottom line, this idea of needing to make magic items more special is an emotive argument based on a romanticized version of the good old days of AD&D in reaction to an idea of the modern game. But it isn't about either. It's about an impression of an impression of both. This is why I call nostalgia the sweet poison. I said this during the edition wars back in 2008. I would have said it if I was, ar if I was around at the level I am now in the edition wars in the early 2000s, and I'm saying it now. A romanticized idea means sweet butter all to me in the face of what's actually on the table and in the book. Oh, and one last thing. If you're tempted to call me a power gamer pundit for disagreeing with you, feel free to come on. I would love to fact check that argument. Stay frosty.